Hi, my name is Greg Piazza, and I'm one of the faculty at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Cardiovascular Medicine, uh, one of the members of the Board of Directors for the North American Thrombosis Forum, and the Education Chair uh, for the organization. And I want to welcome you to Clock Chronicles. Uh, this morning we're going to be talking about uh, the distinction, or lack thereof, between provoked and unprovoked venous thromboembolism. Uh, for a quite uh, a while, we've been dividing DVT and pulmonary embolism, or PE, uh, into two distinct categories. Provoked, where there's an identifiable trigger for the blood clot, and unprovoked, where the blood clot just happens out of the blue. Uh, the problem with that distinction is that uh, it's not black and white, and sometimes it's a very artificial uh, difference between the two. Uh, there are a number of patients who have provoked venous thromboembolism, but have risk factors that aren't transient. They're persistent provoking uh, or persistent predisposing factors uh, that increase the patient's risk for DVT and PE even after they get through the initial treatment of a blood clot. So you could imagine a patient who is undergoing uh, total hip replacement and suffers a blood clot. Uh, the hip replacement is a surgery that is a clear provoking factor and we would treat that for a limited amount of time with anticoagulation or blood thinners. Now, if we consider that very same patient and add to their problem list inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, uh, obesity, smoking, and maybe some mild kidney disease, now there are a number of predisposing permanent risk factors that won't go away after the patient recovers from their total uh, hip replacement. And as such, they may be at higher risk for recurrence than someone who doesn't have those uh, persistent provoking or predisposing factors. So you can see that it's not really black and white, and the field itself of venous thromboembolism is starting to move away from this artificial distinction between provoked and unprovoked. We know that unprovoked venous thromboembolism patients have a high risk of recurrence, and we tend to provide those patients with long-term anticoagulation to lower that risk. Risk, but now we're starting to realize that there are patients who have provoked venous thromboembolism but a number of risk factors that don't just miraculously go away that may also benefit from extended duration preventive measures. Uh, there was a study called Einstein Choice published a few years ago that actually showed that even in a population of patients with 60% suffering provoked venous thromboembolism, continuing blood thinners uh, for a longer period of time actually was very protective for those patients. So I can envision, and a lot of experts in the field uh, feel, that in the future we probably will be considering individual risk factors uh, and other comorbidities in patients rather than just splitting them into two groups of provoked and unprovoked and using the risk profile of the patient on an individual basis to make decisions about how long they should be on blood thinners. So I think what we're moving towards is a more precise type of uh, medicine and treatment for patients with DVT and PE. Thank you for joining Clock Chronicles.